and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a productive and healthy week thus far in this class. We are looking at the listening section of IELTS, specifically focusing on part one to practice with some strategy and feedback. Hi, Azhar, Udin, Sida, Ziava, Sami Rocky, remember, Shaik Fazil, Suman Amatya, Soviana, Harish Divas Karki. Nice to see many students in the class. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this class is presented to you by Demic IELTS Success. Be sure to visit us there. For the general version of the test, check us out at G-E-L-T-S Help on both of our web portals. We have lots and lots and lots of great materials for you at a very competitive price to help you quickly and effectively improve communication and strategy and English for IELTS. Uh, this is our academic website here at aehelp.com with the blue background. Click that big red button to join. We'll use this in a few moments for the listening audio this is the general website here with the green background. Click that big red button uh, to join us there. Hi, Nazir. Hi, Hina and Nishat. Nice to see more of our members coming into the class now as well. Uh, again, students, uh, if you need to contact me for whatever reason regarding the IELTS or our product, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I'll be happy to answer your inquiries. Uh, tomorrow, members, uh, we will do a task one class. I'll take a look. I think I have a couple of requests for that still. And then, uh, of course, uh, for everyone, we'll do listening parts three and four of this exam uh, tomorrow. So uh, between today's and tomorrow's class, you will have a complete uh, listening section and we'll be able to uh, check scores as well. Now, students, uh, this listening exam is uh, test number one in the curriculum book, um, and uh, it's uh, found, I believe, on uh, page 81 of the book. So for those of you who have it, it's CD2, track number one. We're going to start the audio just to get into the listening here um, pretty quick. I'll darken up the screen a little bit so you can see the questions better. And um, yeah, thanks, Nashat. Um, and uh, again, students, uh, I'm using uh, my um, earhook microphone for this and a nice Bose speaker. But if it's quiet for you, please use a headset and uh, please turn up your volume. My volume is max for these listening uh, audios. So turn it up and very importantly, students, very, very important, please don't put your answers in the chat. Just write them in a separate document or piece of paper so we can go through them together and everybody has a fair chance to answer, okay? So uh, for the audio, I'm just gonna hop back to our website here and uh, there's a My Student account there that you can log into. Uh, once you've logged into your My Student account, you get a tour of all of the components. Um, there's a lot of materials and software to help you there, including computer-based practice exams, videos, and this one here, of course, is the IELTS Audio CDs, CD tracks. So we're going to uh, CD number two, track number one. And again, uh, students, so volume is max, uh, and uh, don't put uh, the answers into the chat. We'll go through them together, okay? So here we go, students, with listening audio uh, for listening section of the IELTS part one. This recording is copyrighted. Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. 
the recording can be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men buys a gym membership. First, you have some time to look at question five. see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. The man says he wants a three month membership. So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer one to five. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. Before we can get you started on getting into shape, I'm going to need some personal details from you. Certainly. Let's start with your name. William Bacon. Yes, B-A-C-O-N. OK, William. Now I need your residential address. Oh, please call me, Bill. I feel odd being called William. OK, Bill. So your address then. Right. I don't know. 53 Spoonar Street. Liverpool. Oh, I know that street. My grandmother lived there when I was growing up. The street name is spelled with an A, is it not? Yes, that's right. Spoonar is spelled S-P-O-O-N-A-R. And your K-3-8-7-Y-Q. T-K-3-8-7-Y-Q? No. Ninth, 1980. And your telephone numbers, starting with your home number. I don't have a home number, just a mobile number. It is 312-77-8391. Fine then. Now, do you have any medical issues we should know about, such as asthma? I have no medical concerns. I'm in perfect health as far as I know. Now, I need to ask you a few questions to find out what type of gym membership fits your lifestyle the best. There is more than one type of gym membership? Oh yes, there are a number of different options. We have our most basic membership due to work out on the machines on the main floor of our town centre facility. Then there is our premium membership, which allows members usage of the machines on the second floor of our town centre facility, as well as access to our third floor lounge. to look at question six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions six to ten. That sounds great. Are there any other members? Yes. 
called it the Premium Plus membership. So if I go to London or Kent or Newcastle, can I use your gyms there? Well, yes, but we don't currently operate a gym in Newcastle. We do, however, operate a total of 22 gyms in England, not including this one in Liverpool. 23 gyms, that's impressive. What is the price difference between these memberships? Well, at your three-month level, the basic membership is 53 pounds. The premium is 84 pounds is 95 pounds. That's quite a step up from basic to premium. Yes, but it's quite good value for the additional services and location options. I'll have to think of a bit. If you along with yourself, great deal. That's to join me. Greg loves to work out, but he's already has a gym membership. I could ask Steve, but he's so busy with work all the time. I think I will ask my neighbour, Kate. She's been trying to get back into shape after having her baby last autumn. Wonderful. I will see you soon then. Yes, you will. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Mike, and it was a pleasure helping you. I will hopefully be in tomorrow with Kate. Does 11 work? No, sorry, I'm not in until midday. I will see you midday then. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, viewers, and in half a minute, make sure to check your answers. Let's go through the answers uh, together now and um, we'll see how you did. Okay, so uh, here we go. Um, with uh, question number one. So here's a man applying for a gym membership. Okay. And uh, oh, it's you're saying it's poor sound quality. I'm not sure why well, that is. Question. Just a second. Take some time. I'll have to check the audio after this class, but hopefully. Um, hmm. It could be the connection, it could be the audio. I'll double check and see if it's the microphone or not. Uh, is it better right now? Now it's okay, you're telling me? All right, let me uh, try something here. So let's see if we can fix the audio here a little bit. It could be something with the microphone, possibly. Um, and. Uh, I'll play the audio one more time. So just give me one second. Okay, does everybody want me to play it just one more time? All right, voice is okay. All right, well, listen again. Um, sorry about that. It's uh, a lot of moving parts here on my end. Two computers, DSLR camera, short throw projector, microphone system. A lot of moving parts to these lessons, you wouldn't guess, but uh, it takes quite a bit to get a lesson like this going. All right, I'm going to try this one more time, okay? So let's do this one more time. I'm going to play the audio nice and smooth for you. So here we go. We'll go back. All right, here we go. You One more time. several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions. And you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of questions. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answers. Everything now is okay now? The listening this audio is clear on my end. Can you hear me okay? Let me try something here. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. All right. Okay, let me know if it's not clear. You will see that there is an example. 
This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. The man says he wants a three month membership. So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. Before we can get you started on getting into shape, I'm going to need some personal details from you. Certainly. Let's start with your name. William Bacon. Bacon spelled the same as the breakfast food? Yes. B-A-C-O-N. OK, William. Now I need your residential address. Oh, please call me Bill. I feel odd being called William. OK, Bill. So your address then? Right. I live at 1653 Spoonar Street in Liverpool. Oh, I know that street. My grandmother lived there when I was growing up. The street name is spelled with an A, is it not? Yes, that's right. Spoonar is spelled S-P-O-O-N-A-R. And your postcode here in Liverpool? PK387YQ. TK387YQ? No, PK387YQ. Right. Now we need your date of birth. April 9th, 1980. And your telephone numbers, starting with your home number. I don't have a home number, just a mobile number. It is 312-77-8391. Fine then. Now, do you have any medical issues we should know about, such as asthma? I have no medical concerns. I'm in perfect health as far as I know. Now, I need to ask you a few questions to find out what type of gym membership fits your lifestyle the best. There is more than one type of gym membership? Oh yes, there are a number of different options. We have our most basic membership, which allows you to work out on the machines on the main floor of our town centre facility. Then there is our premium membership, which allows members usage of the machines on the second floor of our town centre facility, as well as access to our third floor lounge. What is so special about the machines on the second floor? Nothing really, but our gym is extremely busy, and often the machines on the second floor are the only ones available. However, as I said, they are only open to the premium members. Tell me about the lounge. Our lounge is fantastic. The room is big, about 50 feet by 50 feet, and we have two large televisions and many comfortable chairs. There is also full bar service and a complimentary snack bar. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. That sounds great. Are there any other membership options? Yes, there is one more. We call it the Premium Plus membership and it allows customers to use any of our gym facilities in the country. So if I go to London or Kent or Newcastle, can I use your gyms there? Well, yes, but we don't currently operate a gym in Newcastle. We do, however, operate a total of 22 gyms in England, not including this one in Liverpool. 23 gyms, that's impressive. What is the price difference between these memberships? Well, at your three month level, the basic membership is 53 pounds. The premium is 84 pounds and the premium plus is 95 pounds. That's quite a step up from basic to premium. Yes, but it's quite good value for the additional services and location options. I'll have to think this over a bit before I make a decision. 
Just so you know, Bill, we are running a promotion right now. If you sign up another person along with yourself, we will give both of you premium memberships for the price of basic memberships. Wow, that's a great deal. I wonder who I should ask to join with me. Greg loves to work out, but he's already has a gym membership. I could ask Steve, but he's so busy with work all the time. I think I will ask my neighbour, Kate. She's been trying to get back into shape after having her baby last autumn. Wonderful. I will see you soon then. Yes, you will. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Mike, and it was a pleasure helping you. I will hopefully be in tomorrow with Kate. Does 11 work? No, sorry, I'm not in until midday. I will see you midday then. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, hopefully the audio was okay there. I'll definitely test the audio system after this class. It seemed to be off on the last class as well. So I'll do that. All right, uh, so now um, let's go through the answers together and make sure that you're taking the right steps to get the maximum score possible on your listening section of the exam. Uh, here we go. Okay, so everybody says it was fine. Yeah, if, if it's not right, maybe it's this um, uh, microphone. It's maybe had its days and uh, I need to replace it, which is possible as well. So anyway, uh, let's do this. And so uh, here uh, you have to fill out a gym membership application form as if you are the administrator. Uh, first of all, you had to get this person's name, uh, specifically his surname or family name. His name was William and his family name was Bacon, like the breakfast food. Uh, bacon, spelled with a big B, okay? If you put a small B, it's wrong. It has to be a big B and you can write all big letters like that as well, okay? So that would also be correct, Bacon. But small B, that would be wrong, all right? Capitalization is very important for the IELTS and correct spelling is very important. So Bacon, um, his address is 1653. And again, for part one, they take their time. They give you some um, second chances, some spelling. So uh, make sure to be patient and listen. His name was Spoonar. Very good. Shirojidin, Zaid, excellent. Divas, Karki, yep, they'll take that. So Spoonar with two O's. Rangana, very nice. So Spoonar. Spoonar, absolutely. So 1653, Spoonar Street. Okay, and uh, his postal code. What was the postal code? Now, the postal code... Uh, the spacing, it doesn't matter. You just have to have the right numbers and letters. For the letters, use capitals. So Hina says it's PK387YQ, and you're correct. So PK387YQ. Uh, make sure, students, that your letters and numbers are very, very clear for the examiners. Uh, the rule for marking in the IELTS is if they can't clearly see it or know what letter or number it is, they will mark it wrong. Does everybody catch that? That makes sense. So um, if it maybe looks right, it's wrong. Okay, that's really important. So really pay attention to your penmanship. It can't kind of look like a seven or it can't kind of look like a Q. It has to look perfectly like a Q. It has to look perfectly like a seven, like a three, like an eight, okay? The instructions for the examiners are if you're not 100% sure of what it is, you have to mark it wrong, all right? Okay, um, so uh, here we go. Uh, question number four. Um, what is uh, Bill's, as he likes to be called, what is his residential phone number for number four? Is the phone number residential number Zaid Nawafa says number four is none okay all right none it is yeah he doesn't have one none 
Uh, by the way, when you're filling out forms in English and um, the um, question is not applicable to you, another way that we commonly fill out forms is like this NA for this kind of answer. So not applicable. And the IELTS would take this uh, for this answer. It means not applicable, okay, or not available. Not applicable, not, av not applicable is actually what it means, but yeah, not available is close, okay? So none. All right, none is a sure answer because you see it here as well, right? So you know that they're going to take the word none, okay? So no phone number, N-A. All right, uh, let's keep going. Number five, uh, that's why I darken the screen a little bit because when it's bright like that, you can't really see much. Um, so you had to choose the correct diagram A, B, C, or D. Now, uh, clearly the difference between um, A and B and C and B and C and D is the dimension. So uh, the correct answer here was A, absolutely. Okay, uh, why? So what are the two pieces of information that tells us that it's A. Can anybody tell me that? Ildar says it's because it's a square. Can anybody remember the specific information that you get in the listening? Why we know that it's A? Yeah, very good. Ferio Zobek says it's 50 feet by 50 feet. Yeah, so it's 50 by 50. And the other piece of information, Dr. Krishna says, is there are many seats. Yeah, 50 feet feet by 50 feet and many seats that's right so uh, and that's what you should notice when you're reviewing this question is that there are the different dimensions these two versus those two and then of course the many seats versus the few seats okay so it was clearly a which was the square 50 by 50 having many many chairs to sit and enjoy the television. Okay, good, great. All right, now number six, uh, you had to match the membership option with what is included. So um, this is uh, all just one question, right? So in your answer sheet, you would have number six, and then you need to put uh, B something, C something, okay? So that's how it would look in your answer sheet here. Um, did anybody catch what B is? So uh, A is three basics, so we know we don't have that. And then B is one of these and C is one of these. And this should be fairly easy. It's logical uh, just by the name, okay? So the premium membership B is premium B access to the lounge yeah and c the premium plus is access to facilities around england okay so here you should have b1 c2 okay b1 and c2 is what you should have okay all right so that's one. You have to get both of those, okay? It was a fairly simple question, so it's just one point. Now, uh, seven to ten, it was a short answer question. Uh, how many gyms does the company operate in England? All you need here is a number, so it says two words and or a number. So how many for number seven? It was 23. Very good. Good job, uh, Georgie. Good job, Cool Deep. You have to be uh, careful. Um, the, first, they say, oh, 22 gyms, not including this one. And then the man says, oh, 23 gyms total, right? Because 22 not including this one means it's 23. So good, Natalie. Okay, you have to catch that. It says 22 gyms, not including this one. And then the man says, oh, it's 23 gyms in total. That's great. Okay, so listen carefully. Number eight, uh, what is the cost of the premium membership? So how many, or sorry, how much, how many pounds uh, does it cost to get the premium membership? The premium membership. 
That's right, 84 pounds. And all you needed here again was the number because you have the word. So you don't need to write pounds, you just need to write 84. Okay, that is the correct answer. I'm not sure why YouTube is hiding 84 for some people, but anyway, that's correct. So if you had 84, that's right. Okay, um, who is Bill going to ask to join him at the gym? Who is Bill going to ask to join him at the gym? And it's just uh, a simple name here. They did not give you the spelling because you should know the spelling of simple names like John and Bill. Okay. Uh, the neighbor, Kate. Okay. So again, it's a capital. So make sure when you're writing your K's, this part comes up really nice and high. So we can see clearly that it's a capital K, Kate. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think they'll take neighbor. They might. Kate is definitely the safer bet. Okay. Um, if you write neighbor Kate, sure, that works. Okay. So you could do that. All right. Number 10. What time is Bill meeting Mike the following day? If you write neighbor, maybe, maybe not. Kate is more specific. Uh, students always go for the more specific answer, okay? Always write the most specific answer. It's uh, the right one, okay? So Kate is more specific than neighbor, okay? Uh, midday or noon is okay, all right? Um, so noon here would be okay. If you want to be perfect, midday, it's one word, is okay. If you write 12, it's wrong, okay? Because 12 a.m. or p.m., we don't know. If you write 12 p.m., that's correct as well, okay? So midday, noon, 12 p.m., would be okay, 12 would not be okay, so be careful with that as well. All right, students, so uh, how did you do? I mean, even though you had bad audio the first time around, you did get a little bit of extra help here, uh, listening twice to this conversation. Um, what was your score out of 10? So what did you get on this... Uh, listening part one from 10. Okay. Um, Andy, midday should be one word. Um, if it's used with a hyphen, I don't think they'll give it to you. Okay. Midday is one word, students. Um, so for this, you want to get at least eight or nine, okay, for part one. Part one, you want to get eight or more, okay. So that's what you want to get uh, because the next parts are just going to be more and more difficult. So 8, 9, 10 is okay. Uh, Kate is K-A-T-E. It's not Katie. It's Kate. Okay, so careful with that. All right. Um, okay, students, let's do uh, part two. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, please do let me know if the audio quality is bad just so I can do something about it. Okay. Hopefully it isn't. Hopefully we're going to have nice audio for this, but I'll get right into it. So uh, get ready. Again, please don't write your answers into the chat. Give everybody a fair chance. We're just going to jump right into it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a travel show about tourism. Time to look at questions 11 to 16.
Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Deborah Sloan and welcome to Hotspots, the travel show that highlights great tourist spots around the world. Today we have a representative from Calgary, Canada, who is going to tell us a little about the city. Thanks, Deborah. Yes, my name is Robert and I'm going to tell you all about the wonderful city of Calgary. Sorry, I hate to interrupt, Robert, but can you tell me exactly where Calgary is? I'm sure many of our viewers are wondering. Sure. Calgary is the largest city in the province of Alberta, which is the second most western province in Canada. Alberta lies directly east of the province of British Columbia, of which Vancouver is a very well-known tourist destination, and directly west of the province of Saskatchewan, of which Regina is the capital. Canada is a very big place, and that is shown by just how far Calgary is from many of the other major Canadian cities. Calgary is over 1,000 kilometres from Vancouver, and over 3,400 kilometres from Toronto, Canada's largest city. Canada is definitely a very spacious country. Yes, indeed. Well, let me tell you a little about Calgary. Calgary is a beautiful city of approximately one million people, situated next to the Rocky Mountains. It is known most, perhaps, for the world-famous Calgary Stampede. Is that with the cowboys and bull riding? Yes, and it's held every July in the city. The Stampede attracts more than a million visitors each year from all over the world. It is referred to as the greatest outdoor show on earth. Another fact that Calgary is well known for is oil, which was first discovered in the area in 1902. With the boom in oil prices over the past 40 years, Calgary has seen its population grow from 400,000 in 1971 to over 1 million in 2007. In that time period, Calgary was by far the fastest growing city in Canada. Many sports fans will know that Calgary was host to the 1988 Winter Olympics, and to this day, Calgary remains a winter activity destination, with several world-class facilities dedicated to many winter sports, from bobsled to curling to speed skating and everything in between. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the cultural side of things, Calgary boasts a number of festivals during the year, including a fringe festival, a comedy festival, as well as the Calgary International Film Festival. Calgary is also home to numerous theatre companies, as well as the Calgary Opera, Alberta Ballet, and the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. Sorry to interrupt again, Robert, but this programme is called Hotspots. So what's the weather like in Calgary? I've heard it's cold. Yes, in the winter it can be quite cold, but in the summer, it is also quite warm, with average summer high temperatures hovering around 23 degrees Celsius, while average winter high temperatures are around minus 2 degrees and routinely go down to minus 20. Calgary experiences something quite unique when it comes to the weather. It has these weather fronts called Chinook winds, which can blow through the city in the winter and temporarily raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius. These Chinook winds can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, and they are welcomed with open arms by the people of Calgary. Calgary is also one of the sunniest cities in Canada, as well as one of the driest, which makes up for a lot of the cold weather. Honestly, though, if you're looking for a winter getaway to a hot spot, as you say, Calgary is not the place to go. But if you are looking for a winter getaway that includes skiing or snowboarding or anything else done best in the cold weather, Nobody does it better than Calgary. Thank you, Robert, for that fascinating look at Calgary. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students. So uh, that was part two listening, a typical kind of uh, audio conversation 
between two people, in this case a host and a guest of a show. And now let's go through these answers together. Um, so the first one was a little bit of a diagram map type of question, and we're going to have more of these in our exams that we're developing this year. Um, so let's go through this. Uh, you had to match the diagram with the choices given below. So here in your answer sheet, you would have uh, question 11 and question 12, and then you had to put the correct letter. So whatever 11 is, you have to put that letter here, and whatever 12 is, you have to put it there. And here you had um, a little bit of a compass that shows you north, south, east, west. So uh, of course it helps if you know the uh, geography of Canada a little bit and the provinces. So here they said this province lies directly west of Alberta and this one lies directly east of Alberta. So number 11 was, many of you are saying D, um, British Columbia, and that's correct. Okay, so west of Alberta is the province of British Columbia, of British Columbia. Okay, uh, Calgary is in uh, the province of Alberta, it's a city. Okay, uh, British Columbia is the province, and we just shorten it for BC, and everybody that got that correct, you get a bonus thumbs up from me because that's my home province. That's where I am from. That's where I live usually in the year is British Columbia, one of the most beautiful places on the planet, no doubt. All right, uh, number 12, uh, this province is uh, east of Alberta. Anybody catch that one? What was number 12? Anybody catch that one? So what was number 12, another province? There's really only one other province available. So if you know the provinces of Canada, or at least a little bit, you would have guessed that that was B. Saskatchewan, capital city of that province is Regina. So um, Vancouver, it's a big city in British Columbia. Uh, Calgary, it's a big city in Alberta. And Regina is a big city in Saskatchewan. So Regina is the capital city of Saskatchewan. Um, Calgary, I believe, is not the capital. It's Edmonton. And um, for British Columbia, of course, the capital is Victoria. So make sure you know those if you're moving to Canada. But number 11 was D. Number 12 was B. All right, now we can brighten up our day a little bit here to answer the remaining questions. Okay, and all of those provinces are beautiful and big places. Uh, these provinces together are, uh, I would think maybe larger than all of Europe, just these three provinces, okay? Um, if you want to know size-wise, from here to here, it's probably about 3,000 kilometers. So if you want to drive from Vancouver all the way to eastern Saskatchewan, you have to drive for about 3,000 kilometers, and then you're halfway in Canada, okay? Then you still have Manitoba, Ontario remaining, okay? So very big country indeed, if you think about it that way. All right, um, here we go. Number 13 to 14, you had to pick two here. Uh, it doesn't matter the order for this type of question. So 13 and then 14. Um, one million people, this number is used to describe two groups in the recording. Which two of these groups does it describe? Population of Alberta, population of British Columbia, Calgary, number of visitors to the Calgary Stampede or the number of visitors to Calgary each year. Georgie says, I think it could be C and D. Amir, our member. Hag Shanash says C and D also. Um, population of Calgary, yes, C. And uh, 
D, the number of visitors to the St Calgary Stampede, absolutely. So just imagine, students, that this city, Calgary, has one million people living there, and during the month of July, the population of that city doubles for this rodeo, for this huge stampede. Of course, people come from all over the world, a lot of people from the U.S. There's a lot of people from South U.S. who are huge fans of horseback riding and rodeo. And so uh, that's what happens. Now, unfortunately, I have a feeling that this year, the Calgary Stampede, the greatest outdoor show on earth, will probably be canceled because of the COVID. That would be my guess, because of COVID-19. So another major world event that's very unlikely to happen this year due to the coronavirus. So one million people will likely not be going to Calgary this year. But the correct answers were C and D. Okay, uh, here we go with 15 and 16, some more multiple choice. Think about statements. So Calgary is well known for A, wheat, B, oil, C, natural gas. Anybody know? The answer is B, oil. Although the oil industry is now dying in Alberta, but the correct answer there is B. There is lots of oil in Alberta. That's right. Okay. Um, number 16, which of these events did Calgary host? The Stanley Cup, the Winter Olympics, or Expo 88? This is for the next one, for number 16. Everybody still sticking with B? Shiro Dijin says, I think it's also B. I'm sticking with B. B and B is good. It is. Winter Olympics. Of course, Canada having a nice cold winter. Uh, winter Olympics uh, have been hosted in Canada a few times. Uh, bonus question, anybody? Bonus time. Ding, ding, ding. For your general knowledge. Uh, how many Winter Olympics have been hosted in Canada throughout the years, how many Olympics, Winter Olympics? We've never had Summer Olympics yet in Canada, although that would be nice, uh, as far as I know. How many Winter Olympics? Good try with the two times, but it's not two times. It's three times. Very good, Devas. Three times. Once in Calgary, once in Montreal, and once, most recently, in 2010, in Vancouver, three times we've had the fortune to host the Winter Olympics in Canada. I was at one of them, the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics, and that was awesome. I feel really, really bad for Japan this year because this year Japan should host the Summer Olympics and they've done a lot of preparation as Japanese people are famous for, including melting gold from a whole bunch of electronics for the gold medals. And now it looks like because of the coronavirus, the Summer Olympics will be done differently, postponed. I don't even know what's going to happen. Anybody know what's going to happen with the Summer Olympics in Japan this year? It's so sad. Uh, that's yeah it's that's one of the worst negatives i think of the effect of covid is the japan summer olympics i, I have a feeling that would have been quite amazing well, hopefully they'll do it next year they'll move it a year i don't know all right um i feel bad for the athletes that are preparing for that it's just a little anecdote there okay um, so here we go, students. Let's keep going. Uh, number 17, average summer highs in Calgary reach how many degrees Celsius? Now you have degrees Celsius here, so all you really need is the number. So 23 is enough, okay? Um, you don't need the degrees Celsius. You don't need that because we have, we have 23. If you write 23 degrees, they'll give it to you. Okay, it's still okay. All right. So 23 degrees Celsius. All right. Okay. Um, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. 
Complete the information sheet below. You had to fill in this little summary from what you heard, no more than two words. Always pay attention to those instructions, okay? Average winter highs in Calgary reach something two degrees. And the answer there was minus. Very good, Erkin. Minus two degrees. Minus two degrees. Chinook winds can rise or raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius and can last anywhere from a few hours to a few something. Number 19, did anybody get that? I think you can even guess it if you use good logic, you stay focused. Charlie Sen says, I don't need to guess, I know the answer. It's days. Now, students, be really careful with your plurals, okay? So hours, days, it's very clearly an S. Uh, plurals matter. If you don't have the S, you get it wrong, all right? So be super, super careful with plurals and singulars. Uh, when you're transferring your answers to the answer sheet in the paper-based exam, check the plural versus singular situation. If you see um, a um, if you see a word like a ah or the, I'm just searching for one, I can't see one. Um, but if you see a ah or the, then it might be a singular, or a ah for sure it's going to be a singular, or an. Okay, but if you don't see that, it could be plural. And here you see a, ah, but it's few. Okay, and few means it's plural. Okay, so few days. All right, last one. Calgary is one of the driest cities in Canada as well as one of the, Billy says, sunniest. Billy, that was good, okay, sunniest. Yeah, sunniest. Sunniest. One of the driest and one of the sunniest cities in Canada, very good. Abhishek, if you want to say sunny, then you have to say most sunny, one of the most sunny, but better or more accurate is sunniest, one of the sunniest cities, okay? All right, uh, students, good job. Count it up. What did you get for part one and part two together? So how was your part one, part two? Uh, what did you get out of 20? Okay, always look at your scores for each section individually and look at them coupled as well. So what did you get out of 20? Uh, if you need a band seven or more, then for this part, you should get 16 or more correct. Okay, that's what you're going for if you need band seven or more. All right, so Billy says 16, perfect Billy. Whatever you want, got 16. El Dorado uh, got 18. Erkin got 14. If you're getting less than 16, students really want to work hard to improve that score for part one and part two. Okay. All right, everyone, uh, we're going to do part three and part four tomorrow. I promise I will take a look at this audio system to see what could be causing that crackling. Fun times for me, troubleshooting um, the uh, audio system, but nevertheless, it's part of what needs to happen for these classes to make all of this come uh, to reality to help you get these high band scores. Students, if you want to have good audio, uh, use the audio from the website, and um, you can do that by uh, joining our premium package at uh, aehelp.com for the academic and gieltshelp.com for the general. Then it's up to your speakers to work well and not my microphone. Uh, so you can join our premium package there. And uh, tomorrow I will be back with task one for members. Of course, everybody can watch and listening parts uh, three and four from this exam tomorrow. Okay, so we can do a complete uh, listening section. Have an awesome rest of your day. Stay safe. Uh, wash your hands, of course, and uh, try to exercise some social distancing. Um, let's minimize infection. Much love to all of you. And hopefully you'll be here with me tomorrow at the same time. Bye for now.